Hello everyone, I hope you're well, I hope you're healthy and that you're having a fantastic day. This is the version of the video with commentary, however if you'd like to watch the video without commentary that is also available on my channel, it should be uploaded on the same day as this video so it should be easy to find if you go to the channel and look under the video section. So the first place we're going to look at is called Cha Usuyama. So the exact facts behind it aren't exactly known, but some people believe that it's a kofun, that it's a burial mound dating from the 5th century. So whether or not this is actually true, I don't know. Though that's what many people believe. So you can see it in the background there where those trees are. That's a little hill where some people may be buried. And then next to it you got this lovely little pond with a red bridge stretched across it. So it's only a tiny little hill, it's only 22 metres tall. So it's very easy to go up if you want. So this is a nice place to come in the summer. It's free to enter to Noji Park. However, a few years ago, you used to have to pay 200 yen to get in here. But they changed that. And also, this is a good spot to come for cherry blossom as well in spring. And we're going to walk to Shinsekai now. And on the left, you have the Osaka Municipal Museum of Art. So this is quite an old building. It was built in 1936. It has a permanent collection containing paintings, sculptures and craft work mainly from Japan as well as China and then it has lots of special exhibitions for example Picasso, Monet however because of what's going on in the world at the moment there aren't any upcoming exhibitions this year so I'm not sure if that's because they don't want people to gather together or perhaps it's just a logistical problem moving the artwork across so to go from this museum of fine arts across to Shinzakai you walk across this elevated footbridge or well, you can see a Ben Harakas as well there 300 meters tall so yeah back to this footbridge so this footbridge actually passes over Tonoji Zoo Tonoji Zoo was the third zoo to open or third public zoo to open in Japan in 1915 and in terms of visitor numbers I got a feeling that it might be the second most popular in Japan second only to Oeno Zoo and the reason it gets so many visitors is probably because of its location 
So this is in Osaka City and it's a very busy area with Tonoji Station being a hub and only being a short distance from the main southern hub of the city in Namba. It's also very cheap, it only costs about 500 yen, well not about 500 yen, exactly 500 yen for an adult to enter, which is about 5 US dollars. So that's incredibly cheap compared to the zoos in England. However, I have to be honest, it's not the best zoo in the world, but it is incredibly cheap. They have quite a big range of animals. I think they have tigers, lions. They used to have an elephant, but now they don't. The elephant passed away, but they've got an empty enclosure still, so I don't know if they're going to find a new one. And also on the right you can see Sutenkaku. Sutenkaku is a really popular landmark in Osaka and if you buy any type of souvenir from Osaka it will often have an image of Sutenkaku on it. The current height of the tower is 103 meters and the observation deck is at a slightly lower height of 91 meters. It was originally built in 1912 but that structure burnt down and it was rebuilt but when it was first built in 1912 it was at a much shorter height of 64 meters however at the time standing at 64 meters it was the second tallest structure in Asia quite interesting to think that 64 meters at the time was the second tallest structure not just building but structure in Asia very different to today and it's only about a kilometer away from Japan's tallest skyscraper Abeno Harakas which is 300 meters so as I said the original structure was destroyed in a fire in 1943 and because at the time Japan was obviously involved in World War II rather than rebuild it they used the remaining steel for the war effort and after the war ended citizens lobbied to have it rebuilt and it was reopened with the new structure in 1956 so we're about to enter Shinsekai you'll be able to see the sign up there with the yellow lettering and as many of you no, I'm sure. Shinsekai means new world in Japanese. So the neighborhood was created at the same time as Sutenkaku was built. And they used both New York and Paris as the model when they were designing the layout and architecture 
of the area. You've got some vending machines here selling beer and cigarettes. And also on the left you have this Billy Ken statue. When you walk around Shinsekai you see Billy Ken everywhere and there's also a big statue of him at the top of Sutenkaku. And before I came to Japan I'd never heard of Billy Ken but it's a charm doll that was created by an American art teacher and illustrator in the 19th century. So you can hear some construction going on in the background. And it seems as though at the moment there's quite a lot of construction going on at tourist sites, perhaps there using this chance, this opportunity, when there aren't the international tourists to catch up with maintenance work. So this video was taken in the afternoon at about 3 or 4 o'clock, so most of the restaurants are closed at this time. This area is definitely focused on nightlife, so it's a, a lot quieter during the day. In addition to the bars and restaurants, you also have some theatres, so there's a performing arts theatre on the right and also you have some cinemas, well specifically some adult cinemas, you can perhaps see one in the right there and then there's another one coming up on the right as well It seems as though they're catering to the very male population of this area. That's one thing that you definitely notice when you walk around Shinsekai and Nishinari is that there's very high proportion of men to women. And we're coming up to, I guess you could call it the main strip of Shinsekai, through which most tourists walk when they arrive. And at night you have lots of people from the bars and restaurants standing around on these corners trying to get people to go to their restaurants and you have a shop on the left there selling lots of souvenirs and then this is just a, another look at Sutenkaku it's definitely worth a visit You also have some catch gacha machines there. So you can maybe see a couple of fellas who've had a bit too much to drink on the left. Having a nice time. So yeah, back to the food. The main food for which this area is famous is kushikatsu. And kushikatsu is deep fried, skewered, meat, fish, vegetables. There's lots and lots of different types. 
Uh, popular ones include Rencon, which I'd recommend, or Rencon Lotus Root. And when you eat the Kushikatsu, you dip it into a, a sauce, which is... Well, it's difficult to describe the sauce, actually. But it's very similar to Worcester sauce. I think they do actually use Worcester sauce. I think it's perhaps a mix of Worcester sauce, Okonomiyaki sauce, and tomato ketchup. So usually you would order a selection of them, at least about five, five with a, a beer, it's usually a good ratio. And also if you look up you can see a big fish, so that's a, a fugu fish, advertising that they're selling fugu, which is blowfish or puffer fish. So you probably heard of fugu and you know that it's poisonous if it's prepared incorrectly. It's a popular delicacy throughout Japan but apparently it's a lot cheaper if you eat it in Japan compared to in Tokyo or elsewhere. Also on the right there you have also on the right there you have a rickshaw driver or Japanese Jin Rikisha. I imagine he's probably having quite a tough time at the moment. Not a lot of custom. We also have a uh, barbers there on the left. Then also on the left you have a little amusement space. Yeah, there's also some good retro gaming to be had in Shinzakai. There are several arcades dotted around and you can play some 80s and 90s classics. So you have early editions of Street Fighter 1 and 2 the world's first two-player arcade game Donkey Kong and yeah lots of other ones I've never heard of as well also on the left you're going to see a clothes shop selling stereotypical Osaka clothing and <laughs> by stereotypical uh, I mean that Japanese people associate Osaka with, well, one, Yakuza, and secondly, Osaka middle-aged women, or Obachans, are famous for wearing animal prints. So if you want to look like a gangster or a middle-aged Osaka lady, is this a place to come buy your clothes? So now we're heading out of Shinsukai into Nishinari. And down this alleyway you have lots of different types of restaurants on the left and right. The place on the left here specializes in horomon or offal, so the innards and organ meats of animals. A really interesting thing that you have down this alley is a parlor for 
Shogi and Go. So, if you haven't heard of Shogi before, it's often called uh, Japanese chess. And Go is a very old game originating from China, which looks somewhat similar to checkers, but I've never played it, I don't know the rules, so I don't know if it resembles checkers in gameplay or not. So often when you walk past the the Shogi Go Hall, you see many people standing outside the window watching. So yeah, you can see it here on the left, some people looking in at the games, or perhaps they're waiting to play. Sushi and tempura. You can see on your right there, some place selling cigarettes. As really surprised how cheap cigarettes are in Japan. I don't actually smoke <laughs> but uh, I always look at how expensive cigarettes are when I travel to different countries so I just think it's an interesting comparison that you can make. So a a pack of 20 premium cigarettes like Marlboro Reds would cost you about 500 yen so that's about 5 US dollars whereas I think in the UK it would be almost double that although smokers in Japan still think that's expensive and moan about it Also, after this tunnel, you'll see a really big pachinko parlour on your right. I mean, you see big pachinko parlours everywhere that you go in Japan. But there seems to be an especially high density of them in this area. If you haven't played Pachinko before, I personally don't think you're missing out on much. It's it's very um, overly stimulating. So I'm not really a fan of it myself because it's incredibly noisy and you have lots of flashing lights you have a stench of smoke everywhere although I'm pretty sure that the smoking bans that are coming into force at the moment throughout many different types of Japanese establishments are also applying to pachinko parlors so maybe they're not smoking anymore but you have people who queue up outside the pachinko parlours then go in and spend 10 hours a day there so perhaps the smell of cigarettes isn't too bad compared to the other smells that are knocking around so this area of Osaka Nishinari and the station that we're heading to, Shin Imamiya, has a bit of a reputation. It's regarded as a, a dangerous area. But I think danger is always relative. So it's considered dangerous in Japan and dangerous by 
people living in other areas of Osaka. Oh, also have a church here on the right. I'm not sure what type of denomination it is. But I think it's always interesting when you see churches in places that you aren't expecting them. And seeing a church in Japan, I think is interesting. So, yes, this area is considered dangerous. Though, I think most people coming here from other countries wouldn't feel too unsafe walking around especially if you're male or you're in a group as I mentioned before the thing that stands out for me is just noticing how high the proportion of men to women is so obviously you can see some women but it's definitely overwhelmingly male and also perhaps not specifically in this area because we're quite near the station but if you get more out into the depths of Nishinari you also notice that the average age is very high so perhaps it was more of a dangerous area when the average age of residents was a bit lower so I guess when they were 20 and 30 years old in the 1960s and 70s Maybe they would have been a bit more raucous, but at the moment they're generally older, so I guess there aren't as many problems. Just stopping here for the tram. There are just two tramways in Osaka. This is the Hankai line. And this station is Shin Imamiya Ekimai. The tram that you're about to see is a modern one. However, they have many different tram cars running on this line. And the oldest tram car that they have still in operation dates back from 1928. So if you're into trains and trams it's definitely worth checking out if you come to Osaka so we're almost at the end of the video and if you're still watching at this point thank you very much and also if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please consider doing that So, also leading up to Shin Imamiya, you have quite a lot of hotels on the right. And a few years ago, these hotels were catering to the, um, I guess, semi-homeless population in Shin Imamiya. By semi-homeless, I mean there are many people who live in this area who don't have a permanent address and sometimes sleep rough on the streets and other times pay a thousand yen or thereabouts to sleep in a very low-priced hostel or hotel. So, yeah, leading up to the station you have many hotels which used to cater to those people, but from a few years ago 
there was a big influx of tourists into Osaka so many of these former low-cost hotels renovated and started catering to the international tourists however <laughs> at the moment those international tourists aren't coming so I'm not sure how business is going for them Shin Imamiya serves several different railways I guess the main one is the JR line so Shin Imamiya is part of the Osaka loop line but also from this station you have the Nankai Railway and as we just passed as well the Hankai Tramway and also it's very close to the Osaka Metro Station Dobutsu Emai so thank you very much for watching the video I hope you enjoyed this commentary video and if you did please leave a comment down below giving me any feedback or letting me know what you want to listen to in terms of commentary or what you'd like to see in the videos and also I hope you have a wonderful day if you're at the start of your day or if this is the end of your day I hope you have a wonderful tomorrow. Thank you and see you in the next video.